Hi guys, welcome to this video tour of my industrial IBM Model M. This is not going to be a review like usual, it's just going to be a tour showing you things about this keyboard, uh, both inside and outside, in an attempt that someone can make a little bit more out of it. I found out a few things about this keyboard with the help of some people who knew a lot about it, but I promised to make some more pictures of this keyboard, but I figured it would probably be best to do it via my usual medium, a video instead. There's very few markings on the keyboard, so we're not exactly sure what it is, but a few people have pointed out a couple of things already. It's sharing some parts with a known prototype, but it could very well just be a very, very early production model instead as well. This video is going to be a little bit more improvised than the usual review, but I hope you enjoyed it anyway. I normally keep it stashed away in this Lexmark Model M box. I once bought a new Lexmark Model M and uh, that's why I'm keeping it in at the moment because I don't really have an IBM Model M box. Now the first thing to note is that it appears to be a little bit of a Franken board. I found this keyboard in the UK but it appears to be an ANSI model. However the enter key looks different. The writing looks different if you notice the, the lettering is a bit more vague. So I'm not sure it's native to this board, but then again, both of these keys have springs under them, which leads me to think that it is actually an ANSI model, even though it might have a different cap. And it's got a few different caps on the board as well that I don't think are supposed to be here. I think these two, they're supposed to be from a terminal keyboard instead from a Model M. And the same goes for the caps lock key, which has a lock on it, which I think is from a terminal model instead. It's also got an alt graphic key, which I don't think are present on American keyboards as far as I know. I think that's a European thing. The num lock key says num look, which I don't think I've seen before on a Model M yet. And for some utterly bizarre reason, look at that, the, <laughs> the lock light sticker is in German. No idea what that could be about. The keycaps are beautiful. They've got these blue sub legends and I don't know what, what color this is supposed to be. It's a kind of pinkish brown thing on the arrows and on some of the other subscripts instead. So it's three colors on the numpad in writing. It's very, very nice. These keycaps are beautiful. I love them. It came with this very thick and very shiny, look at that, AT style cable. It's attachable, usual uh, SDL connector. Um, it, it's not XT or anything, it's just AT, but uh, the cable is in beautiful condition. Look how shiny that is. It's just, oh, really nice. Thick as well, feels very nice, high quality for sure. Also, possibly the most cool feature on the keyboard is the badge. Look at that, it's got a square metal black badge. Looks really, really cool. I love it. The switches also sound quite different from later Model M's. Here, I'll give you a demonstration. It sounds very, it sounds very deep and thick for some reason, whereas if you compare it to a modern Lexmark one, here's a typical blue oval Lexmark one. Quite a big difference there, which might be due to the thicker plate. We'll uh, get to that later. I think that's most of the things I wanted to show on the surface. Oh, by the way, they're um, two part keycaps, I should mention. They're not the one part ones. I don't know if that means something. And uh, let's see what happens when we open her up a little bit. Now, before I open it, here's the back of the keyboard. You'll notice there's absolutely no label on it. I've heard that the UK plant models from this era had stickers that weren't stuck on properly, so they always fell off. So maybe that's why. There doesn't appear to be any residue for it, but um, I don't know if it originally came with a label or not, nor when it was made, nor what part it's supposed to be. And that's one of the main problems with identifying exactly what keyboard this is. It's uh, gray. But uh, unlike some industrial Model M's, which I know are made out of gray plastic, it's actually painted. It's white plastic with gray paint on top. You can see it on some other places as well, like here in this corner. 
So I don't know what's up with that. Maybe the very early ones came like this, just painted. Standard flip out feet, they're pretty normal. There's a little bit of white underneath that as well. It wasn't painted properly. Um, right, let's take these bolts out. Here's the bolts after I've taken them out, and I hope it shows up well on the camera, but they actually have a little bit of a rainbow effect to them. They don't look like any of the other bolts I've seen on Model M's. They are still the standard 5.5mm, but uh, they look different somehow. Not quite sure what that's about, but it looks kind of cool. Right, let's take the top off then. Doesn't appear to be any markings on the inside of this. Uh, actually, there's a little bit here. It says, I think 1351554, not quite sure. Something a little bit snapped off here, actually. If you look closely, you can see it's white plastic with gray paint on top of it, like I mentioned earlier. And then underneath is the keyboard. So let's have a look at that. Uh, when I got it, I cleaned it up, so it's um, there's not a lot of dust in it. There's a little marking here. Let's get some light in. It says 1351638. Obviously the part number for the barrel plate there. Uh, here's the LED thing. It's very small. Yellow connector. Apparently yellow connectors are something very old. I'm not sure. don't know what that is. Um, another rainbow steel bolt in it. Yeah, by the way, that's another thing I noticed. This one's actually bolted to the frame, unlike later Model M's, which you could just take out like that. This one's actually bolted to it, which explains the hole that's beneath it, because that looks quite non-functional otherwise. Uh, let's get to the other side. It's got a ground here, and a uh, hole oh, cir circular on this side, rather than oval, which it is on there. It doesn't have a ground on the space bar, by the way, like some um, granite made Model M's have. You know, there's a little thing that clips on here or something, and that's connected to the space bar via wire, but that's not, that's not the case here. It does have wire stabilizers on the large keys. These were replaced with pegs later on, but these use the old wires. It sounds very thick. Look at that. Quite a weird sound. Right, so let's unbolt this. Right, and then we can take the plate off. Right, having taken that off, you can see the back plate. It's this... Uh, Lovely rainbow effect steel. Apparently, that was only used on the really early Model M's. I think they stopped doing that at late 1987 or something. It's the thickest type of uh, backplate they ever made. And it looks really awesome. The rivets are quite different, though. You know how they are usually melted? These are definitely not machine melted. I'm, I'm pretty certain. I mean... They look like they're hand melted. They're, they're not as organized as they normally are. See, that doesn't look quite as if it was done by machine. There's a huge difference in the way they look. Almost all of them are still there. I think there's only one or two missing or something, but they definitely don't look machined. There's a little bit of fluff on this one. Yeah, it looks, looks a bit sloppy, actually. Then there's this uh, number here, 02485390078. I have no idea what that is. Um, connector, here's the PCB. It's quite long, actually. Uh, doesn't say that much on the back, but it does say, hopefully I can get the camera to focus, 8449, which means that it was made in late 1984. Now that's very, very old. I know this shares a date with a known prototype, but I can't tell from the rest of the board whether this is a prototype or not. Like I said, it could just be a very early production model, but at the very least, it's made up of very old parts. 138680. I 
must be the part number for that chip or something. I'm not quite sure. And here it's got the <laughs> famous mandolin crystal, four megahertz clear thing. There was quite a lot of hype about that from one particular member of the community. Apparently this is only used on really, really old PCBs, but uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's a prototype. You can see the ground stuck to the PCB here, which is connected to the board via this weird braided cable. Don't know how normal that is. Um, here's the old yellow connector. Again, the PCB looks pretty big. I'm not even, what is this all about actually? What is this doing here? I mean, it doesn't really look like there's any components here. It's just solder points. There's no jumpers either. I think, no, it's just solder points. That's a bit weird. Not quite sure what that's all about. I don't know if this is there on other Model M's from the top of my memory as well. It's a kind of rubber thing. I don't know, it must be something from the plate that's poking through. Maybe it's a giant river to something. I don't know. Um, this doesn't appear to be hand melted though. This might very well be machined, unlike the, the rest of these small rivets, obviously. That's, look how, how weird that is. It's even got a kind of pattern on it. Like the iron that they use to melt these rivets had some kind of grid patterns on it. See? Here's the bottom case. It doesn't really say much on it. There's a couple of numbers on it, but no date stamp, unfortunately. And sometimes manufacturers just actually stamp the date on there. Or well, they have time wheels in them. But this has neither, unfortunately. So let's see, what, what do we have? Um, some kind of weird M minus one thing. I think, isn't this some kind of quality control mark? Part number for this thing, 1351505. GP7165, no idea what the bloody hell that means. Unlike later model M's, there's nothing here to keep the PCB in place, by the way. So it's just kind of floating around in there. It's just hold, held down by these pins. And I noticed that the controller from this board doesn't completely fit in the case of other Model M's. The PCB is a different shape, I think, or something. Or it's too big, or I don't know. It doesn't seem to fit in the clips that I usually hear. If we have a slightly closer look at the PCB, you'll notice that there's actually something under the sticker. Looks like some kind of metallic thing under this sticker on top of the chip. Here's what it says, a bunch of gibberish. I have no idea what any of that means. Malaysia chip, 80, 84, maybe that's made in 84 as well. Out of curiosity, I picked up the PCB from an old Lexmark, a drowned one that I put out of its misery not too long ago. That one was quite unsalvageable, unfortunately, but I kept the PCB. And let's compare the size of the two. It's quite a lot bigger, actually. And there's a lot more going on as well. It doesn't seem to have an oscillator like this on it. So I don't know why this keyboard needs an oscillator if this one doesn't have it. Or maybe it's a part on here that I don't recognize or something. I have no idea. It's got more uh, ribbon connectors as well. It's got three here, whereas this one only has two. And the grounding cable is much smaller. See, it's just a fairly simple wire, whereas this had that quite elaborate braided wire instead. Actually, I think I know what the third thing is for. I think that connects it to the LED PCB. So it doesn't actually have a cable. It uses a ribbon connector instead, whereas this uses this yellow wire. I just noticed that the mandolin crystal by the way, actually appears to float. Look, it's got these really weird legs and it's actually off the bottom of the PCB. It's resting on those little copper legs. Maybe that's some kind of, I don't know, oscillation shield or something to prevent it from shaking around. Right, there she is all put back together again. What beauty, yeah, I might just give her another spin just for old time's sake. <laughs> Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Please let me know if you know anything more about this keyboard or if you can identify more of its features, you know, anything at all really to help me along. And I'll see you this weekend for another review. 
Adios and goodbye.